Lenny Jackson auditions? Down the corridor, second door on your left. Thank you. Mr. Benny Jackson is expecting me. Down the corridor, second door on your left. Thanks. Hello, Phoebe. Why, Judy Elvin, what are you doing here? Same thing you are, I guess, auditioning for that spot with Benny Jackson's band. Oh, I didn't know you really sang. I'd never really have come over, except Mr. Jackson was so anxious to hear my voice. I don't for that day I take the job. Ready to start? Any time. Give me a test, will you, Joe? Sure. One, two, three, four, testing. One, two, three, four, testing. All right, Joe. Sure you have the cue straight? Yes, Mr. Fralick, I think so. Well, we'd better check. Now, when I flash this light several times like that, it means we don't want to hear anymore. Get rid of the girl. Right, sir. That study light means send the girl up to the office. Right, sir. Shall we begin the auditions? Ready, Benny? Start any time now, Joe. Sure nice of you to let us use your office like this, Mr. Fralick. Ah, oh, nonsense. When my star orchestra is opening in town, the least I can do is to find them a singer and a few specialty acts. Oh, by the way, what is happening to those acts? Now, don't you worry about a thing except finding that girl singer. I'm taking care of the acts, all right. Well, when do we audition those? We'll have them together in a day or so. Oh, incidentally, uh, I ran across a girl I think you can use. Pretty little thing. Blonde. I know those blondes of yours. Hey, remember Chicago? <laughs> no, this really is a lovely child. Her name's uh, Phoebe. I'll bet she comes from a fine old southern family. <laughs> Why, Bobo, how'd you know? Have you met Phoebe? I know the type. Well, I tried to reach her for the auditions, but uh, she was out. Yeah, that's fortunate. I'll tell you what. I'll have her make a record, and you can listen to that. You'll see I'm right. We'll listen to the record. Hiya, Judy. All right, girls, who's first? One at a time. Here, honey, you come first. Thank you. Well, oh, how do you like that? I was here before. Here we go again, boss. I'm just out of voice today. Now, if Mr. Jackson will let me come in tomorrow... Uh, I understand. Good day. You're next. I do hope you know this piece. how bad she really is. Uh, maybe you could use her for a crowd chaser. <laughs> Are you kidding? Where would you get the crowd from? <laughs> Mr. Jackson, they're missing. Lost. Who's lost? The orchestrations. They didn't come. The orchestrations didn't come. Where are they? I don't know. The baggage got rerouted in Chicago. Wartime, they say. So what are they going to do? Ship them through Guadalcanal? We can't open without music. I told them, boss. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Well, I've done all I could. Oh, an opening five days off and we've lost the orchestrations. Now, give me Bert Sternberg in Chicago. No, I'll hold the line. I knew I should have carried those things through myself. Yeah, it was only a small trunk. Yes, I'm waiting. Uh, would you cut her off, please? That's all, sister. But I haven't finished. What do you mean by stopping me in the middle of my song? But Mr. Jackson wanted to hear me sing. Well, he's heard you sing. Well, I've never been treated like this before in all my life. I'll speak to Mr. Fralick about this. And I just came over here as a favor to Mr. Jackson in the first well, place. Well, he's heard you. You're next, Judy. Don't 
look so nervous. But I am. Listen, you just sing like you did this morning at the boarding house, and you'll be all right. I'll try. Check back over at the hotel, then meet us over at the baggage department at Grand Central. Okay, boss. Hello. Hello, is that you, Sternberg? Say, have you got a duplicate set of orchestrations? Yeah, ours were lost in transit. Will you ship them out Air Express right away? Now, if you can make that 5 o'clock plane, they'll be here in time for rehearsal tomorrow. Yeah. Swell. Now, meanwhile, we'll keep checking with the baggage master here. Oh, thanks a lot. Everything happens to us. I'll call you later, Mr. Freilich. Come on, Bobo. Today. What about that last girl, Mr. Freilich? She was terrible. Oh, ten years sounded swell to me. You were the best of the lot, kid. I, I'm sorry. Thanks a lot anyway. You've been awfully nice. How'd you make out with Jackson? I didn't. Oh, too bad. Mary? 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 Hello, Merlini. I don't see Mary, but here's Martha. No, thanks, Judy. How'd you make out with Jackson? Not so good. What do you suppose Mary got to? I need her for my act tonight. When did you see her last? Early this afternoon, when Mrs. Blodgett came up to see about the ranch. Ranch? Did you have it? Hmm? No. No. Not Mary. She wouldn't dare eat my act. You don't know Mrs. Blodgett. Is that you, Judy? Hi, Marge. Any luck? How'd you make out with Jackson? No. Oh. Well, don't worry, kid. Guys like Jackson just don't appreciate good singing, that's all. Uh, good evening. Mr. Blodgett, have you seen Mary? Mary? No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, there was a Mary in Des Moines, I remember. Oh. Did you look under the bed? Under the dresser? In the drawers? I've looked everywhere. Well, she must be around here someplace. Let's give another look in your room. Oh. I have just remembered about Mary. Mary, she was of the theater. Ah, the theater. Yes, Mary, a beautiful girl. She was with the team of Ross and Rowe. Yes, I remember. It was in Butte, Montana. Cold? Why, your ears would freeze to your hat. It was the... Merlini, did you look in your hat? Mary! You almost made me late. Another stunt like that and you'll wind up on toast with mushrooms. Hmm, I can use some of that. Me too. Let's put on the feedback, Mark. By the way, I heard you were talking of my wife. Ah, Judy, you really look beat down and trampled on. I am. Listen, why don't you take some kind of a job? And look for auditions in your spare, spare time. time. Yeah. But if I get a job, I won't have any spare time. Well, if you don't get a job, you won't need any spare time. Meaning? Meaning that you can't get any place with that sour puss. Keep up your morale. Smile and show your pretty teeth. You mean like this? That's it. And we'll look for a job that has something to do with music. What do you have? Uh, what's good? T-bone steaks, pork chops, hamburger, fried chicken, and rabbit. T-bone steak. 
T-bone steak. I just said that's good, but we don't have any. Uh, maybe you better have a salami sandwich. Oh. Well, that's what we had in mind. Okay. Got a dime, Bobo? Got a dime. Number, please. Have you got Sweet Jam by Benny Jackson? I don't think it's in yet, but I'll see. That's Jackson again. I've heard enough Jackson for one day. <laughs> What's wrong with Jackson? He's got a tin ear. A deaf mute who thinks he's an orchestra leader. Strictly a phony. <laughs> that guy doesn't know about music. That record hasn't come in yet, so try tomorrow. What do you mean, deaf mute, phony? I beg your pardon. It's a cinch you don't know anything about music, Jackson's or any others. You're just a dumb little cat of fatteries. Girls, you play the music and they go on the band, you think just because you're salary the Hitler mate? We well, music vote of the radio. We don't have any foreign recordings. You can't talk to us like that. You don't know that phony orchestra leader like we. I know plenty. And it burns me up to hear people talk about something they don't know anything about. You mustn't be impatient with our operators. They try to do their best under present conditions. We're extremely short of help right now. I'm sorry. Would you like to hear Leva face it? No, thanks. Leva, skip it. Excuse us, we gotta go. Come on, Judy. Hey, wait a minute now. Uh, about this Jackson guy, what's so wrong with him? Everything. She auditioned for him today. And she's the best singer in New York City. He doesn't know a good voice when he hears one. Well, why don't you give the poor deaf mute another chance? Maybe he wasn't wearing his earphones. Earphones wouldn't help him. He needs to be completely rewired for sound. Cancel our slimy sandwich, will ya? With or without? With. Let's get a couple of earphones. Come on. Marge, where are we going? Did you hear what that jukebox operator said? What? There's a shortage of help. So? So? I told you I'd get you a job that had something to do with music. As of tomorrow, you'll be queen of the American jukebox operators. Jukebox Judy. Gosh. Job with music. Am I quite clear? Yes. I simply cannot impress upon you strongly enough you, the need of accuracy in your filing. You, Every time you finish playing a record, see that it's returned to the proper slot. Otherwise, you will find yourself hopelessly lost in records. Am I quite clear? As you see, each number is marked in white on the record itself. Am I quite clear? Yes, ma'am. There's your first call. Answer it. Number, please. Yes, sir. Yes, we have that. Just a moment. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Just a moment. You shouldn't have any trouble if you follow my instructions. To the letter. Number three. I'll do my best. Number, please. Thank you. Number, please. particularly stressed the necessity of keeping the records properly filed. Yes, ma'am. Number, please. Excuse me. Just a moment, sir. Number, please. Is the Benny Jackson recording of Sweet Jam in yet? Apparently, I didn't make myself quite clear. Carelessness is something we cannot tolerate. The records must be filed in order. Otherwise, no end of confusion results. Probably when I told you that this afternoon. Pardon me if I've tuned in on a busy line. I only to hear a record. Uh, what number would you like, sir? Benny Jackson's recording of Sweet Jam. Yes, sir. Number Benny three. Jackson at a time like this. Yes, Thank you. I realize this is your first day here, but hereafter, the records must be filed in order. Am I quite clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Number, please. Listen, dear, I asked for the Benny Jackson platter of sweet jam. I gave it to you, sir. No, dear, that isn't Benny Jackson. I'm sorry, sir. I'll try to find you the right one. Well, small world, isn't it? How long have you been working here? Too long. This is Marge's idea of a musical career. Besides, a gal has to eat. Yes, yeah, so is a man. Say, how do you like old, uh, quite clear Horton? 
The clearer she gets, the more muddled I am. <laughs> Look, don't let me interrupt your career. What number would you like, please? Listen, sweetheart, I don't expect you to be an elephant. But a cow could remember for two minutes I'm waiting to hear sweet jam. Who's a cow? Why, you double-breasted stuffed shirt pants. Careful, honey, careful. <laughs> what this country needs is more supper hours. Ah, uh, food. Delicious thought. I feel like I've been on a turntable. You have, dear. Hey, we gotta hurry. I've gotta be back in 45 minutes to make a recording. Well, the way I feel, I could wolf a whole meal in five minutes. Thank you, sir. Why didn't I think of that before? What, dinner? No, a recording. Here's a real chance for Mice to make like an agent. And a record's much easier to carry around for auditions. Sounds expensive. Nonsense of the band waiting to make a record for a new singer. And Hank's a friend of mine. Well, we can slip you in for free. Well, that's wonderful. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Take over, Mary. First recording, huh? Uh-huh. Do we get a rehearsal? Take it easy. Don't expect too much when you hear the record. You may not sound like yourself at all. Yeah, I told her people don't recognize themselves the first time. Yeah, and that's the boss with her. He's always bringing in some blonde to make a recording. I better go. Got to get back to the merry-go-round. Okay, Judy. Can I walk you home after work tonight? Sure, but stay clear of quite clear Horton. I still need my job. Right on. Ready, Hank? Yes, sir. Just as soon as I put on a new record. Uh, what's this you have there? 
Oh, I, uh, I was testing some new equipment. Well, let's continue on that, Dave. We can't be wasteful in times like these. Oh, I can use this for no, something uh, else. No, we can use that one quite all right, quite all right. Yes, sir. We're all ready, Phoebe. What are you going to sing? Oh, I'll sing this one. This is most suited to my voice. Anything my little hummingbird wants. Got to have everything just right. If her voice registers like a personality, why... You want it on the telephone, Mr. Freilich. Oh, that's all right. We'll wait for you, Mr. Freilich. No, no. Can't waste time. Uh, you go right ahead. I'll be back in just a moment. Spumoni. Spumoni over the tropics, you know. Uh, yes. Now, Mr. Felix, I am sorry I have to be so firm about this, but something has to be done. We are opening in one week. We have sold me an orchestra, a singer, and specialty acts, but so far I have not even seen your orchestra. They haven't even showed up to rehearsal. That's the least I could expect from them. Now, 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 Mr. Spumoni. I I'm sure they'll be along shortly. You see, there was uh, some little difficulty over orchestrations. And when do you expect to have the entire organization ready? Tomorrow. Positively, Mr. Spilmoney. Tomorrow, positively, everyone will be together. And how about the girl singer? Well, yes, uh, that's been taken care of, too. Uh, Mr. Jackson found one today. I'm sure you like her very much. Especially acts, oh, they've been taken care of, too. Yes. Goodbye, Mr. Spamani. Oh, Why don't you send Can't wait to hear my first record. Maybe you had better. All finished, eh? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm so excited, Mr. Freyler. Can we hear it now? Uh, certainly. Uh, never mind, Hank. Uh, we'll hear it in my office. Much more cozy in there. <laughs> Now what do we do? Don't worry, I'll get it back after he plays it. Yeah, if he doesn't break it up when he hears that voice. <laughs> the first time on a record. It's beautiful. Every bit as good as I expected. My dear, dear girl, my sweet little flower, 
I'll make you the sensational star of the season. What a voice. What feeling. You'll be the thrilling discovery. Confidentially, my dear, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to release that record just as it is. I'll put it on the back of the new Benny Jackson record that I'm releasing Saturday. You know what else I'm going to do for you? Sell you to Benny Jackson for the tropics. Yes, sir. You'll open with Jackson at the tropics. Oh, Mr. Freelich, I just think you're wonderful. I just don't know how I can repay you. <laughs> By now, my dear, if I'm going to put that record on the market, we'll need a little contract. I'll have it drawn up right away. Miss Smith, send in one of our blank contracts. Thank you. Judy, some roast chicken? Roast chicken? Oh, so sorry it isn't roast chicken, is it? I'll take that. Here we are. Sir? Remember when we killed him the day in Bridgeport, those three days we played, we had him in the aisles. Find way to shoot crap. Uh, wise guy, you know, not a straight man in the house here. Get her. <laughs> what is that, Wally? You kidding, Wally? Chicken dinner and water. Wish we had some wine. Wine. Yeah. Look! Not bad. Hey, Marlene, can you do anything about our room rent? <laughs> <laughs> ah, greetings. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. Hey, Hello. whose birthday? We're holding a wake over Judy's new job. Where were you? Oh, sorry to miss you, Judy, but I got mixed up on some work. Work, horrible stuff. Did you get the record? Not yet. Fairly got a saving streak. He used the same platter for Phoebe. Such a voice shouldn't happen to a cat. Phoebe? What record? Joe thought that if I made a record, you could use it to get me auditions. Oh. Only Fairly took it up to his office to listen to it. But don't worry, Hank said he'll get it back for you. Ah, Freddy won't want it when he hears that Phoebe crack. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific, Bob. <laughs> well, I do hope you don't intend to keep up this racket all night. I really need my sleep. I'm sure you'll all get your sleep, honey child. You rarely will. Fortunately for me, I shan't have to live here much longer. It may interest you all to know that the United Recording Company has just signed me to a contract. Good night. Good night. How did she get that? Something's awful screwy somewhere. It sure is. Well, one consolation, we'll get rid of her. Well, here's to her continued absence. Let's drink up here. I'll drink to that. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, children, uh, making merry, I see. Hello, Mr. Blodgett. Won't you have a snack with us? Well, I don't mind if I do. Ah, <laughs> oh, chicken, I love it, I love it. Uh, this reminds me of the dear old happy vaudeville days back in Chicago. <laughs> well, happy days, guys. Happy days, yes, happy days. Happy days. <laughs> hey, it reminds me. I got my invitation today. What invitation? Greetings. Having submitted yourself to a local board composed of your neighbors for the purpose of determining the place and time in which you can best serve the United States in the present emergency, you are hereby notified that you have now been selected for immediate military service. You will therefore report to the local board named below on the 9th day of August. Now well, that's day after tomorrow. Yeah, it sure is. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, he's got an invitation to a war. He's got an invitation to a war. He's got an invitation to a war. To a war. To a war. He's got an invitation to a war. You got an invitation, a solid invitation, to join a lot of fellas you knew. Send your resignation to each affiliation and reach the Union Station at two. Bad music. Steak and mashed potatoes. Movies will be cheaper. You'll travel in a sleeper. You'll have a jeep to take you around. If you see some action, you'll be the big attraction. And celebrations all over town. Hey, laddie, gotta help your Uncle Sam keep healthy. He's our daddy. Believe the regulation. I accept the invitation. Cause you're gonna help the nation settle every altercation. So I'm 
taking a vacation from my private occupation. You may give a demonstration that will bring a decoration. And my future destination may be any battle station. So, so long, yeah. Mr. Jackson, I am a very patient man. Indeed you are, Mr. Spumoni. However, my patience is wearing thin. Do you realize, Mr. Jackson, we have an opening? We only got our orchestrations a few hours ago. Orchestrations are only minor detail, Mr. Jackson. Just one little minor detail. Mr. Frelick assures me you will have uh, specialty acts. Oh, and we will have. Uh, Mr. Frelick is selecting them very carefully. Uh, nothing but the best, you know. And the best singer, I'm told. Where is she? Uh, coming up, we have several marvelous candidates. It's a matter of making a choice. Your choice should be here now rehearsing with a band, Mr. Jackson. Well, you see, Mr. Spumoni. Singer has to saw regular made of my suit. It isn't a question whether she's going to be in the band, wants the sovereign maid or the rates. We just have for the raven nice. So don't, don't expect the raven to them off. We just have to have all the raven salaries, and then we can rate the seat with the morsel. So it is a treat. You may be right, Bobo. But where is the singer? Well, uh, we'll have her here for the next rehearsal, Mr. Spumoni. Ah, the sweetest little vocalist you ever heard. You'll be surprised. Yeah. So will we. Surprised are all very well. But I don't want to wait until opening night to be surprised. Bobo, my son, we're on the well-known spot. Well, looks like we'll have to beg Barra to steal a... That's it. What's it? We steal a singer. Other guys steal from you, you steal from them. It's a thriving business. Okay, but who do we steal and from whom? Boss, if you'll give me the pleasure of your company at the jukebox emporium tonight, I shall run you off a few likely numbers. That, my son, is not an unbright idea. Yes, sir. Jump in, Jiminy. You ready, Judy? Just a minute. Number, please. Number, please. How about the cook stove special? The cook stove special? Yeah. You know, home on the range. <laughs> <laughs> you meet the most interesting people in your work. Wonder where the other half of that wit is. <laughs> Say, did Joe get my record all right? I'm afraid it's lost for sure, Judy. Oh, what happened? Nobody knows. Frank just said didn't send the record back. Gee, and I didn't even get to hear it. Number yep, three. the old Alvin Luck. Running through the fall. I'm recording a sweet jam. Say, aren't you the one that wanted Benny Giant? Yes, sir, but tonight, Benny Goodman. Then Harry James, Orrin Tucker, Glenn Gray, and Tommy Dorsey. Oh, all for a dime. The customer's always wrong. Look, sister, my boss wants to hear records. And when he wants to hear records, he hears records, see? And I got another quarter to back him up. So now the stooge has a stooge. Yes, the stooge's got a stooge. Let me tell you something. You think you can talk to people riding back and forth in face because you're behind that catalog of films? What do you think this is, a ballot crate or a popper's or a salad? We're the kind of people who fought a recent heat in Walmart State. And when I blow my camera, so it'll be now brutal piece of hitting and swell before I was just out. Give me that thing. I bet you wouldn't dare say that in English. I have a good mind to come over there and paste you. You and who else? Me and her, that's who, and we know a couple of Marines. Okay, bring on your invasion force. We'll be here for another half hour. Oh, you! Up to now, this is a dull job. Yeah, but things are picking up. To horse, Judith, we've got a war to wage. Carry on, Bertha. Could this be the voice of irritation? Well, if it isn't my dream girl, welcome, welcome. Uh, my friend, allow me to introduce the flower of the American jukebox, Miss... Uh, Judy Alvin. And her friend, Miss... Marjorie Day, how do you do? We are Bobo and Benny to our many fond admirers. Uh, will you fair ones join us? We came here to finish a fight. And you'll need some strength, my dear. Garçon, this is Garçon. See what our guests will have. Well, are you folks gonna sit down or do I bring a higher table? Oh, yes, why do we stand gawking? Be seated, pray. Anything your little hearts desire, spare, no expense. Okay, uh, T-bone steak, medium rare. Didn't I have that same trouble with you two before? Oh, that's right, uh, salami sandwich. How about you? Salami sandwich. Hmm, well, Lenny couldn't have done better. <laughs> Say, did you cancel that sandwich you ordered yesterday? Well, here we are, just one big slap-happy family. 
You know, I never suspected you were the dulcet tones at the other end of that uh, infernal contraption. Do you think the machine will ever replace man? I know a lot it should. <laughs> it has. If it could only do something about woman. Imagine a mechanical gadget, getting your breakfast, ironing your shirts, tucking you in at night, and going... Okay, stop right there. Personally, I think matrimony's here to stay. How about you, dream girl? I managed to do without it. Well, I'm not still carrying the torch for Jackson. Torch? That was a whole bonfire. Hmm, we sure burn him up. You mean you got a rise on the Jackson? Well, tell us about it. Oh, it was nothing. He didn't make you an <laughs> offer, did he? He certainly did. What? Thank you. Sure, he opens with Benny Jackson's orchestra next week. This jukebox thing doesn't mean a thing. It's only temporary. We've got to go. Well, she has a rehearsal. Yes, I guess we'd better. Well, uh, could we drive you over? Oh, no, don't bother. Well, it's no bother at all, Judy. It's a pleasure. It isn't every day we get a chance to deliver two beautiful young ladies into the clutches of that wolf, Jackson. But uh, he doesn't like uh, visitors while he's rehearsing. Well, when Probably. I see you again, Judy. Oh, we'll see you boys around. Uh, Judy's going to be awfully busy, you know. Ah, uh, but you see, recreation is the farm of life. If you're going to remember the wheels of life turning in the places and have a little enjoy castles and velvet, it isn't a question of just going, oh, Jackson and I want to give you the past from the lost. We give you the happiness of love. You're going to go home and sit there and just watch a little cabaret fall by yourself. We want to give you that gorgeous must of the best to give you that effervescence of smelling a wonderful piece of air to the lost and give you love, happiness, kindred, and simplicity. Well, in that case, how can we refuse? <laughs> then we'll see you Sunday. Uh, uh, where do you live, Judy? Uh, 405 West 45th, but I don't know if I can. Sure you can. Well, I'm a gladsome foursome. That's better than a gruesome twosome. <laughs> we'll see you at 2 o'clock Sunday. Uh, picnic or something, you know? I've always wanted to see what one of those things looked like on the inside. <laughs> okay, we'll see you Sunday. <laughs> Bye. Well, well. Uh, how do you like your new act? Not bad. Have a nice one. Will you hurry, Judy? Hey, you're not going to wear that thing, are you? Why not? It's the best one I have. Well, you'd look better in a lampshade. And you need, don't you think it's cheap? Take a bunch of grapes, let them hang right on it. Make it in the shape of an Easter bonnet. Try a piece of screen for the net, I mean. Groove it, improve it, but at the show, remove it. Gee, that's for me. See my pretty little pretty fricassee. Took each bit that would fit. Now my hat's a here. So head a hopper and Carmen Miranda. I've got a topper that couldn't be grander. If this creation does not knock them flat, oh brother, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> How do you like it? Not bad. <laughs> That ought to fetch the fellas. <laughs> Something ought to fetch them. They're late. Try it on. That's probably Blodgett to tell us they're here. Ladies, fame has come to our humble home. Read for yourself. Even with all my years and magic tricks, I can't figure this one out. With my own eyes, I can't believe it. Good day. Well, if she can do it, I certainly can. <laughs> oh, well. Don't let it worry you. Judy, look, look it. Betty Jackson? Why, that's, that's... You're
your boyfriend and your big opportunity. Opportunity? I won't be able to face him. You told him I sang with his bang, and now he's coming here in the flesh. But that's the best way. Listen, Judy, if I know my man, he'll show up. This Jackson guy can give you a break. I'll make an opening to give you an excuse to sing. Well, it might work. Of course it'll work. Wobble that hat number, anything that fits the occasion. With your repertoire and my repartee, how can we miss? I hope you're right. I do. Uh, would you tell Judy Marge the gentleman they're expecting are here? I would be only too happy to convey the message. Pardon me. Oh, I see. Have you seen Margaret? Margaret? No, I can't see as I have. I could swear she followed me in there a few moments ago. What's the matter now? Margaret seems to have misplaced me. Oh, you remember Margaret? Blonde, beautiful creature. <laughs> sure she didn't get down the drain? <laughs> Perhaps I had better call the plumber. Oh, no, I'm sure that couldn't have happened. <laughs> oh, but I knew a guy like Jackson wouldn't show up here. Hm. We might as well shed the fancy duds. I know a swell place in Central Park where we can go roller skating. Swell. On with the slacks. Down. You're being stood up. Oh, Marge, I could believe it. But Judy wouldn't make a date and then not keep it. Oh, sweet and honest like, pretending to sing with our band, huh? Oh, that was Marge's fault. You know, agent stuff. Hey, wait a minute. Marge is okay. Yeah? Yeah, and so is Judy. What am I saying? That's your line. <laughs> They're both okay if they'd only show up. What do we do now? Scram on a quick change. There goes your creation. Keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. We were only going to wait six or eight hours. If you didn't show up by then, we'd have waited some more. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? Anywhere you like, fair lady. The carriage awaits without. Ah, without. <laughs> right, without gas. So, anywhere you like. Within a radius of two miles. I know a cozy spot in the great open spaces of Central Park. Peace, quiet, solitude, fresh trees, green air. Lead on, McDuff. Come on. Why, Mella Sandy, what, are you, what in the world are you doing down here? All right. My phone's running over now. Keep quiet. Hello? Hello. Mr. Blodgett? Is Judy home? Who? Uh, Judy? No, I don't think so. No, she just went out. Well, will you give her a message for me, Mr. Blodgett? Why, I'd be very happy to. Well, please tell Judy that I just listened to that new record that Phoebe Forbes is supposed to have made. I wish Melanie would make you disappear. <laughs> well, tell her, tell her that's not Phoebe, that's her, Judy. Understand? I tell her, yes, indeed. Your, your secrets are perfectly safe with me, Joe. Well, will you tell Judy that that's the record we lost over at the jukebox company? Understand? <laughs> I heard a record you, record you lost? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I, I tell her, yes, yes, I tell her. Uh, goodbye. Uh, yes, you hear that? A record that Judy lost. How in the world could she have lost a record? Sheer negligence, that's what I say. I'm going to be fired for a job. Uh, I wish I had my razor. I'd do worse than Melina. I'd make you disappear good. Ooh. 
We can go as far as we like uh, on a gallon of gas. Oh, that reminds me of that Oldsmobile song. Oh, Judy has a terrific parody on it. Give Judy. Oh, I got one. Listen to this. Hey, but it's gay going way down the road. We got a free wheel and half happy load. No one for Lord, no in the heart. As he rides and she rides along. Sing the highway, Oka. Swing the highway, Oka. Let's find a route that will suit everyone. See little towns getting brown in the sun. Hear the highway, Oka. Cheer the highway, Oka. See with the boss for the mass for the meat, four pints a day. If we should kiss the balls for the base for the watery scams of the available. Cheer the highway, Poker. Cheer the highway, Poker. We will find our heart's delight in the highway, Poker, tonight. Now let's hear some good music. Judy has a number that. Good music? I'm glad you reminded me. I know just the program, all the latest records. Judy, there's, there's something, something you ought to know. <laughs> what I no, mean to say... <laughs> Look, Mr. Jackson. Oh, is that what you wanted to tell me? That you knew I was Jackson? I saw your picture in Down Beach today. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Well, now you know. I'm the deaf mute. <laughs> hey, but guess what I did after our battle at Bosco? What? Went out and got myself completely rewired for sound. <laughs> you don't mind my being Jackson? I'm glad you've overcome your allergy to Say it with love. Bobo, listen to that. I'm listening. Say it with love. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Definitely. You have just heard Say It With Love as sung by Miss Phoebe Forbes. This was a United Recording. United Recording? That's Freilich. Maybe Freilich, but it's not the Phoebe Forbes I know. If you step on it, Bobo, we've got to find Freilich. He's been holding out on us. We'll have to drop you, girls. I hope you don't mind. This is awfully important. It's important. It's crucial. Phoebe Forbes, huh? Goodbye, girls. I'll see you later. So long, kids. Great. That's what you call being dropped. Well, he does have an opening to worry about. Yeah, well, I've got a problem to worry about. That girl we heard wasn't our Phoebe. I'd know that hog-calling voice of hers anywhere. So what? So there's something fishy, and I'm going to find out what it is. Miss Forbes is here, Mr. Freilich. Uh, tell her to wait a moment. Yes, sir. Miss Forbes, come in, please. Good morning. Well, well, well. And how's my little songbird this morning? Oh, I'm just fine, Mr. Fralick. And how are you? Uh, topping, my dear, just topping. Did, um, did Mr. Jackson really call you up about little old me? <laughs> he called me up. He was waiting on my doorstep when I got home last night. That record sure wowed him. He made me promise to have you here bright and early this morning to sign the contract. I told you I'd get very good terms for you, my dear. Oh, Mr. Fralick, I just think you're wonderful. <laughs> Mr. Jackson's here to see you, sir. Morning, Miss Fralick. 
Oh, this is Miss Forbes. How are you, Mr. Jackson? I've just been dying to meet you all. <laughs> I just love your band. Fine. Uh, then it's all settled, eh? You can open with us Wednesday night. I have the contracts already, Jackson. Good. Can you come to rehearsal at noon, Miss Forbes? I have your specialty acts coming at noon, Jackson. Oh, I see. Well, uh, then would you come at uh, 2 o'clock, Miss Forbes? Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> I hope you'll be very happy with us. I'm sure she will be. <laughs> and thanks to you, old man. This is a great load off my chest. Well, so long. I'll see you this afternoon. I'll be there. Okay. Now, that's all settled, my little hummingbird. We'll make your second recording. The orchestra's waiting. All ready, boys? I'll listen in the control booth. wrong with your equipment. She's terrible. She sure is. I can't understand it. Did you make that first record of her, Hank? Yes, sir. Does she sound the same to you? Sure. Same voice, same girl. Uh, there's something the matter. Uh, my office, please. Turn off that noise. Miss... Uh, Miss Smith, will you please bring down that original master record of Phoebe Forbes? There's something wrong with the equipment. Well, I declare. Do you mean to tell me you let me stand out there and sing that song all uh, the way through and your equipment wasn't working? I can't waste my voice. I've got a rehearsal this afternoon with Benny Jackson. Oh, Phoebe. Give him a shot. Trying to make me believe that's the same voice? Oh, hold on. That's the same voice. <laughs> She's terrible. Who is the other girl? I don't know her name. Some girl Joe brought in. Do you mean to tell me? Shut up, Phoebe. Get Joe down here. I can't. Why? He's in the army. In the army? Where? I don't know, Mr. Freilich. When you go in the army, you just go in the army. Do you mean to tell me you released some other girl's voice under my name? You got me into this. You deliberately let that voice pass as your own. That's frank misrepresentation, highway robbery. Are you kidding? Who's robbing who? I got a contract with you, and you're to pay me for making records. And you'll pay me whether I make them or not. I'll sue you. Phoebe, you're Southern accent. And you released another girl's voice under my name. I'll get you for that, too. She's not wrong there. Now, now, Phoebe, my dear, my little hummingbird, let's t go into my office and talk this over calmly. You'll hear from my lawyers, Mr. Fraley. Now, there's no need for you to go to that expense, my dear. Now, let's go into my office where we can be quiet and collect our wits. <laughs> now, what did you have to say to me, Mr. Fraley? Uh, Phoebe. I may have been a little harsh in what I said, but I was upset, shocked, hurt. I was mortified. I've never been treated like this before in all my life. Well, let me help you, my dear. I'll buy your contract. I've been humiliated. 
I've been sold on a wonderful career. And then all my hopes dashed to the ground. And you said I was terrible, Mr. Fraley. After we've been such good friends. I see your position, my dear. And I'm sorry about the whole thing. Now, Miss Smith will draw us up a little form to sign that will release us both from our contract and from Mr. Jackson's. Oh, that's very nice, Mr. Fraley. And I'm perfectly willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, what about my career and my reputation? Uh, I, I agree with you, Phoebe. I'll let, make a little check for the face value of the contract, and then you'll be able to go away and study. Become a great singer. It'll take a long time, Mr. Fralick. Double the face value. Yes, yes, of course. Double the... What am I saying? You were saying yes, Mr. Fralick. Uh-oh. Here we go again. I to think I got her those terms with Benny Jackson. Now, of course, Phoebe, in order for us to smooth all this over with Mr. Jackson, it'll be uh, necessary for you to develop a severe case of laryngitis. <coughs> of course. Uh, that ought to be easy. I am a very patient man, Mr. Jackson. Very patient. But we open tomorrow night, and your vocalist has not showed up. Your contract specifically calls for... I know, I know. But everything was all set this morning. She said she'd be here. All I know is you've been stalling all week. And you're still stalling. Is there a girl with a voice? Is there a girl? Is there a voice? I don't know. I'll call Fraley. Did you try all the Sweeney's in the phone book? No relatives of Joe? Did you call the army camps around here? Well, can't the Red Cross help us? Did you try the Salvation Army? Hello. Oh, yes, Benny? Oh, you tried to reach me before? Well, I was out on business. I just got back. Hello. Camp Gotham Induction Center? Have you a Joe Sweeney registered there who just came in recently? Oh, Miss Ford hasn't come to rehearsal. Well, I can't understand it. She left here in plenty of time. You have? He's in the office there? Oh, please call into the telephone. It's very urgent. Well, she did say she'd developed a slight throat irritation and was stopping by to see her doctor. He's there. We've located him. Yes, yes, I'll hold on. I must talk to him. Yeah, I'll, I'll check up right away, Benny. You wait there. I'll go out and find the girl and bring it to you myself. Uh, goodbye, Benny. Hello, Joe Sweeney? This is Mr. Fralick's secretary. Mr. Fralick. Yeah. Is this the Joe Sweeney that used to work for United Recording? Oh, oh, the Acme Trucking Company, huh? Mm. And you've never worked for United Recording? Well, is there another Joe Sweeney in your outfit? No? Oh. Oh, oh all right, thank you. Wrong Sweeney. Well, try the Navy, try the Marines, call the White House. Hey, Marini! What is it, Ma? Get sick and shut and come in the butcher's room. It's very important. Enter. What's up, Marge? Anything wrong? I gotta get your advice on something. Listen to this. Something up? What goes? I want you all to listen to this and tell me who's singing this song. You can take away my resistance. Say it with love. If you want to... Hey, isn't that Judy? Sounds like Judy. Say it with love. Oh. Judy found her record. She lost. You put a kick in his first such a trick. What did you say? Uh, the record Joe said Judy lost or something. When did you talk to Joe? Why, only recently. He called up about a record she lost. Uh, isn't that it? Well, that does it. If you look. Look! Look who gets credit! Phoebe Forbes. Phoebe Forbes! Boys, we got work to do. Miss Forbes, we have a little matter to take up with you. About a phonograph record released under your name. How dare you come in here like this? You get out of here! That phonograph record, Phoebe. Whose voice is on it? 
I don't know what you're talking about. And you get out of here. I'll call the police. Boys, I guess we'd better explain, huh? this record, baby. Who made it? How dare you do this to me? How dare you? You scram out of this room or I'll have you thrown in the clink. That record, Phoebe. That's none of your business, you big lug. All right, boys. Oopsie daisy. <clears throat> now who made that record, Phoebe? No, let me down. What about that racket, Phoebe? I don't know. Honest. But it wasn't you. No. What about your contract? Well, Mr. Fraley bought it back today. It wasn't me on that record. I don't know who it was. She probably doesn't know, Butch. As long as she admits it wasn't her, we know who made it. Come on, let's collect Judy and make like a posse. Hey, come back here. You can't leave me here like this. I'll sue you for some battery. Those half would think they can do this to me and get away with it. They got another thing coming. Uh oh. Hello, Mr. Jackson. Oh, this is Miss Forbes. Yes, I, I know. I'm terribly sorry. The doctor says I have a slight touch of laryngitis. <laughs> Uh, but I'll be all right for tomorrow night if I just rest quietly. Yeah? I'll be there in time to give your boys my music in the right key. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, I just can't come to rehearsal. All right, Mr. Jackson. I'll be there. Goodbye. She can't get here until tomorrow night. Laryngitis. Never will I open another opening. Positively never! <gasps> We've got to talk to you. Something very important. Crucial. Urgent. In fact, interesting. Just a minute, please. You people can't come in here like this. Miss Alvin, are these your friends? Why, yes. We want to borrow Judy for a while. That's out of the question. Oh, well, we'll bring her right back. Miss Alvin, this is neither the time nor the place to entertain your friends. We have strict regulations. You people will have to leave immediately. Am I quite clear? Who is this obnoxious person? This is an old cat. I think I'll make her disappear. I better go with you. I'm fired for sure. You should worry about this job. Well, here we'll be fine out this afternoon. Come on. Did you try the Merchant Marines? Yep. I've tried everything. Mr. Fraley, please. Oh, uh, Mr. Fralick, uh. my client and I have a matter to take up with you. That record you released under Phoebe Forbes' name. Don't mention that name. What about it? My client can prove that she made that record. And don't think you're going to get away with it, because we are going to sue you. You made that record? I certainly did. My dear, dear girl, my sweet little flower, I can make you the sensational star of the season. What a voice, what feeling. Trust to me and you'll be the frailing discovery. Miss Smith, okay, will you? Okay, I'll get you a blank contract. <laughs> You gave a wonderful performance. You were marvelous. It'll be better next week when Judy goes in it. Why not? Ain't she a Freilich discovery? <laughs> <laughs> well, when are you going to talk to Benny Jackson? Uh, right after the show tonight. Lee! 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the opening of the topics and of Billy Jackson's and his band. <laughs> we have seen dancing, acrobatics, and magic. And now I will give you that great little singer who has recently made a hit as a recording artist and who, we know, will climb to the dizzy heights of fame during a season here at the tropics. Miss Phoebe Forbes! How did she get here? That girl promised to have Ryan Jarvis and disappear. Mr. Fraley, don't worry, she will. <sighs> Marge, we should do something. She's going to mess up the whole show. You're not kidding. Come on, fellas. It's music to my ear When you hold me near And whisper what I long to hear At last it's love I know Your words make me try gentlemen, the pinnacle of the conjurer's art, sawing a woman in half, a possible impossibility, hypnotizing the minds of you people into believing I actually saw the little lady in half. All right, gentlemen, proceed. this moment and take it to heart tonight. Let us live all our life to come, just repeating this fleeting delight. Let's make this moment be our pattern for ecstasy. Though you're distant or next to me, may we the glow. Let's seal it with flame now and settle it with a kiss. So if ever the stars grow dim, we'll remember each ember. 